Everyone has their own unique views and needs when it comes to financial success. If you'd like to leave your financial woes behind and live a life of financial freedom, you've come to the right place. Welcome to the Saving with Steve show, hosted by Steve Sexton. The show will help you with the ins and outs of money. We talk about financial issues that could be costing you thousands of dollars and keeping you up at night. We talk about money, tax reduction, saving more, spending less, 401ks, risk management, retirement, and everything under the sun that relates to you having a healthier, happy relationship with money. Now, here is your host of Saving with Steve, Steve Sexton on UK Health Radio. Hello, welcome to the Saving with Steve show where we talk about the ins and outs of money, pretty much everything under the sun that relates to you having a happier, healthy relationship with money. My name is Steve Sexton. I want to thank you for joining us today. Last episode, we had Bigzo Sullivan. He is the most sought after relationship expert to the movers and shakers of Silicon Valley. Fig talked about how to make work, family, love, all of that work. You got to go see Fig. You can do that by going to the savingwithsteve.us website. Look for episode 108. He's also got something special for everybody. You can just click the link and increase your relationship. Talk to you about what's going on here during the holidays here with the stress that goes along with that. You're going to love it. Now, this week, we're going to be talking about the world of real estate. We've seen interest rates go up. We've seen real estate prices start to come down. We've seen all sorts of things, but I think it's important that everybody knows what the effect of all this is. We go from flying along, all of a sudden a deceleration. What's going to happen? We have Glenn Henderson here, real estate expert. He's going to talk to us a little bit about 2022. What does it mean to you? What does it mean to you in 2023 in a decelerating market? How do you get the most money out of your house? How do you go about selling it? And Glenn's going to share those with us today. So you want to stick with us. We're going to be right back with some Glenn Henderson. More expert advice for having a happier relationship with money still to come on the Saving with Steve show on UK Health Radio. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. The station that makes you feel good. Welcome back to the show that is here to help you achieve your financial goals. It's the Saving with Steve show. Now here's your host, Steve Sexton on UK Health Radio. Hello, everybody. We have that real estate expert, Glenn Henderson. He's talking just about the the state of real estate. It sounds like a presidential speech, but you know, it's kind of cool. We think we, we, I think it's important to know all that's going on with real estate. So Glenn, welcome to the show. Hey Steve, thanks for having me on. Yeah, I'm glad you're here. What I'd like you to do is just start telling us about what we saw in 2022. And let's start talking after that about what we can expect to see in 2023. Yeah, absolutely. So 2022, we saw start off with a bang. Um, you're in the first six months of the year, Depending on the market that you were in, and well, I'll give San Diego as an example, home prices were up almost 30% in six months. Um, the Fed started to make adjustments to the rate in um, June, end of June, beginning of July. And we saw the market basically take a complete reversal market. But um, we saw rates almost double in a matter of three months, mortgage rates almost double in a matter of three months from July to um, August. And end of August, beginning of September, we went from three and a half to seven percent. And that just basically put the brakes on the market. And some markets were impacted more than others. Um, so where we're in California, we have higher home prices. We have a lot of people that are relocating out of California um, and the affordability is so low, we had we were hit extremely hard um, where we just saw the uh, market completely stop. Um, I know our market in San Diego is one of the fifth slowest in the uh, country now. Um, San Francisco was, I think, the first or second slowest. Um, Vegas was um, in the top five also. But basically, it's, it all comes down to affordability. And when you have rates almost double over you know very short span, Either income has to go up significantly or prices have to come down to adjust. And, you know, we, as we know, income's not going up. So prices have been adjusting to accommodate and adjust for the uh, new uh, rates that we have. You know what? I think it's really interesting when you say rates went up to seven. Um, I was talking to somebody who was looking at purchasing a house and he was going to take on like an $800,000 loan. And he goes, you know what? At the two and a half, three percent it was before. 
He goes, you know what? My, my payments were going to be right around $3,500. Now with the new rates, it's closer to be like $7,500 a month. And he goes, it's almost doubled just because, and the amount of interest that I'm going to pay on a monthly basis is over 50, totals up to well over $50,000 a year. He goes, and that's nuts. And, and it, it just didn't make yeah. sense for him to move forward with the purchase of the home. So, you know, I could see where that's coming. I mean, it, it doesn't matter what income scale you're on. When you start paying, you go from two and a half or three to seven. That's a, it's a big, that's a big like, wow. Yeah, absolutely. And with what, what has happened with rates and the, the example you gave is a perfect example. It's cheaper or less expensive for him to rent than it is for him to buy. And when you have a, when you have that imbalance in the market, it's going to push more people into the rental category. So it's going to drive up rent prices, but home prices are going to have to come down or rates are going to have to come down. And it's in the short term over the next year, two years, it's going to have to be the prices because we know rates aren't going to be coming down significantly. So that's where we're going to continue to see the adjustments and prices. And we're going, depending on the market that you're in and how overpriced it was to begin with, we're going to see prices continue this downward trend. Yeah, our in fact, um, I would say already just in our neighborhood, our houses are down by about fifteen percent uh, from the beginning of the year, maybe a little bit yeah. more, and that's just because you know the lack of people wanting to purchase a home. Now you started talking about the impact on rentals. Now are are, are there a lot of money out there looking to purchase rental properties? because there's not a lot of housing or is that something that's slowing down as well? That has slowed down quite a bit as well, just because I think there's two parts to it. One, investors are waiting to see how much more prices come down and just kind of waiting to see how much of an adjustment we have in the marketplace. Then also um, financing is so extremely expensive. So, you know, anything up to four units or four properties in a rental property is still falls under residential, but anything above that then becomes commercial um, loans. And the commercial financing has been become di- extremely difficult to obtain. So we are we have seen a pullback in the um, investor market as well. So let's, let's talk a little bit, or I'm going to just call it the iceberg under the surface. You know yeah. what? We had two years of COVID, okay? And during that period of time, there was, you know, the... Uh, Many mortgage companies offered special situations where people could defer paying their mortgage for six months and stuff like that. And interest mm-hmm. rates were so low and houses were so high, uh, the values were so high, people could possibly refinance, get money out, all that kind of stuff. But the raising interest rates really won't allow for that to come, especially with uh, housing values going down. You know, are we seeing um, a buildup or a bubble, if you will? I don't want to say bubble because that might be the wrong word but a buildup of houses that are in line to either go through a short sale or foreclosure, dumping more properties onto the market and obviously reducing the the, the, the prices as well. A hundred percent. So there was, like you said, there was a lot of the government for or the lender forbearance programs, and then a lot of different states, well, first on a federal level, and then after the federal level re- um, removed it, there was still the state uh, moratorium on foreclosures. So lenders were very restricted or limited on what they could do if somebody was behind on their payments. So you have a large pool of buyers that, um, or I'm sorry, homeowners that haven't made payments in 12, 18, 24 months on properties and lenders haven't really been able to do anything as the owners have been sitting in the homes, not making payments and watching their prices just shoot up or their home value shoot up. They haven't been motivated to make any changes or do anything. But now that we're seeing prices coming down um, and people are looking at, I'm not making payments um, so each month my balance is going up. In addition, my home value is going down. So that equity is diminishing very quickly. So it, right now what we're seeing is it's motivating a lot of people to get off the fence and start looking at options. And a lot of these people aren't in situations where they're short sales yet um, because there's still some equity because we had such a high, big run up on prices. But slowly, those values are going to continue to go down. The balances are going up. And it's going to put a lot of people into those positions where they are um, underwater. And then also, the people that bought in 2022 and a lot of the people that bought in 2021 um, were using very low balance or very low down payment loan programs. Some of them were using the VA loans, which require no down payment. So a lot of those people are already underwater. And a lot of those people settled on homes. They bought homes that they didn't really want, but because there was no inventory and you just had to almost take whatever you could get as a buyer, 
a lot of those people are underwater in homes that they don't really like or they can't afford. Um, so I think we're going to see a lot of those it, in 2023. Um, you know, maybe not the first half, but more into the second half of 2023. I think we're going to start seeing a lot of those coming on the market as short sales. Yeah, I, I actually agree with that because you know, but in the last four months there was a pullout, and they surveyed like 100 percent of the CEOs in the country. And 98% of them says they're getting prepared for a recession. And just a couple of months back when this went out, very shortly thereafterwards, we started seeing the list of different companies that were looking to lay off either in the very beginning, you know, in the next couple of months or right after the first of the year. And you add that on to what you're talking about, and that just exasperates the issue. I don't know how far, you know, prices will go down or anything like that, but I, I agree with you. We're going to see that in the latter, in the middle to the latter part of next year. And that recession will probably flow blown, especially since we're beginning to see even more interest rates up. And in fact, um, the Fed even says they plan to raise interest rates again next year to tame inflation. So we could see, we'd easily be in a stag, a stagflation program and that would not be good for real estate. But, um, you know what? That, that's a, that's a gigantic thing. So is, are you in agreement with that? A hundred percent. Yep. In agreement. And the other challenge we face too is the, just the confidence in the market is not there now too. And all of these people that are fearful of being laid off, people are watching prices going down, all of these concerns with stagflation, the recession, everything else, it makes it hard to want to make a, this large commitment to buy a home right now. So there's no confidence in the market. There's not a lot of confidence in the housing market. So until we have things start to settle out and, or, you know, and things start to improve, it's going to keep a lot of people from wanting to make any type of investment or purchase. And that's going to continue to push prices down as we don't have the buyers or the demand there. Oh, wow. Hey, look, everybody, you want to stick with us? We're going to be right back with some more Saving with Steve. More expert advice for having a happier relationship with money still to come on the Saving with Steve show on UK Health Radio. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. The station that makes you feel good. Welcome back to the show that is here to help you achieve your financial goals. It's the Saving with Steve show. Now here's your host, Steve Sexton on UK Health Radio. Hey, welcome back to the Saving with Steve show where we talk about the ins and outs of money. Pretty much every single thing in the Senate relates to you having a happier, healthy relationship with money. Hey, I truly want to thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you sharing with your friends and family and, you know, about the show. You know what? We we keep growing. Last month, we had over 730,000 listeners. We're very appreciative of all that. Hey, if you want to check out the replays, you can always go to savingwithsteve.us. And if you're enjoying the stories of helpful information and insight on Saving with Steve, then I encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, our Google Play channel, our Spotify channel, and check out a few of our associates uh, affiliates at UK Health Radio, AMFM 247, BBS Radio, and Talk Radio, U, uh, Chuck Radio in New York City. All these networks are dedicated to empowering you to uplift your spirit and live a life of personal and financial freedom. Hey, you always can go to the Saving with Steve Sexton Facebook page to get gifts, gifts, behind the scenes stuff. Glenn is even offering something special to where you can get some information on what's going on in the market if you're looking to invest or if you're just looking to sell. And with that, we have Glenn Henderson. Glenn, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Steve. Now, the next part of the show, I would really like to focus on... Right now, there's people out there that for whatever situation, circumstances, they need to sell, whether they're getting transferred from the job, being laid off, you know, they can't afford the home, whatever the situation is. But in this marketplace, it's kind of difficult. So how do they go about selling the house in this difficult marketplace for the most amount of money? (laughs) I know that's a tall order, but I know our, 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 our listeners and viewers are going to want to know that one. So we always, I always say there's really five components that you need to focus on to get top dollar, and especially in this market right now. The first one we focus on is uh, pre-inspections. So basically what we're doing is getting home inspections, um, termite inspections, sewer, anything else we need to do 
up front. And these are inspections that would normally happen once you get into escrow. But it's so difficult to find a buyer right now and to get into escrow. What we don't want to happen is then once we finally get somebody to then run into issues. So we get all of the inspections done up front. That way we're able to address any potential issues, um, fix what we need to. We're in control of the contractors, the pricing, everything else. And it just eliminates any of those concerns because As I said, it's hard to get a buyer. And then once we get into escrow, people are so fearful about making the wrong decision right now that if they get inspections and there are issues or problems with the home, they're much more likely to cancel um, because of those the condition or the state of the market right now. So the pre-inspections, getting that done up front, getting all the repairs and everything taken care of is definitely step number one that's crucial in a market like we have right now. Can I add a comment to that? Because Yes, please. um, uh, what is it? Um, you know, one of um, our neighbors is in a situation where um, they found something in the inspection and they didn't do a pre-inspection and all that stuff. And basically the person came back and said, you know, you need to drop your house, your price by $50,000 or we walk. Yeah. And they're, and exactly. they're in a tough situation because he's lost his job and everything. And they went, okay. So they just ate $50,000 for something that could have cost him a few thousand dollars if they knew about it in advance. So I understand that's that's a that's a brutal reality of this marketplace too. So that's an excellent point, Glenn. Good, and I'm glad that's a perfect example of it. So our second component is the staging, and one thing that sometimes people get confused by is they think staging means well, I live in my home, so I don't need to stage. But staging means basically anything related to the curb appeal, the and then the way the home shows on the inside. So anything from pressure washing the exterior to, you know, painting, um, taking care of peeling paint, um, you know, on the interior, decluttering, maybe moving some furniture around, um, removing family photos from walls, basically things to make the home show as well as possible. If the home's vacant, then 100% of the time we stage the home and we want to bring furniture in. But there's a lot of options on the market now, meaning a lot of homes are for sale. So we need to do everything we can. And you want your home to make sure your home stands out against the other 10, 15, 20, however many that are in the neighborhood, because buyers have a lot of options and they're fearful and you just want to make it look as nice as possible so they can see themselves in the home and get them to, you know, then take that next step towards making an offer. You know, as you know, I help people with their retirements and things like that. And there's a number of people Mm -hmm. are still looking to move out of California but they love those old pictures of the family and they're just all over the place. And, um, and I'll just say this, it wasn't until the realtor said, you know what, we're going to have to take down all those pictures because nobody can visualize themselves wanting to be here. Uh, and mm-hmm. another person I know had an, uh, like an English garden. It looked, I mean, when it blooms, it looks beautiful. Otherwise it looks like a bunch of weeds. So right now it looks like yeah. a bunch of weeds. <laughs> so the, the, mm-hmm. uh, basically um, she pulled her house off the market because she didn't want it. She wanted to find somebody who loved an English garden that would buy her house. And that's not realistic. Uh, but uh, it was one of those things where the realtor says, you know, we really got to clean this out, put some sod in here, put some nice looking trees. So people come up and say, it looks cute. Exactly. And make it functional and make it appeal to as many buyers as possible because, you know, a family coming in with kids can't picture their kids playing in a backyard in an English garden. But if you clear that out and you put in sod and everything else and you're appealing to a much broader pool of buyers. Yeah. Now, what's the next one? Um, Pricing is the next one, which especially now we're seeing a lot of sellers um, running into issues with the pricing because we're in a market where we're trend and prices are going down. But we're, you can't even look at comparables um, three or four months back. You know, normally you're looking at sales in the last three to six months. Now you get really have to focus on sales over the last 30 to 60 days. And you need to be cognizant of what's on the market, what we're competing with, and then what's actually in escrow. But we're seeing a lot of price reductions right now. And we're seeing a lot of sellers pricing too aggressively for the market. And then the more time you spend on the market, especially in a market where you have declining prices, if you don't get it right up front, you're just going to be chasing the market down. So pricing a little more aggressively and what may feel like you're losing some money um, will actually help and prevent losing further money through sitting on the market for 30, 60, 90 days and having to do more and more price reductions. Because if prices are dropping two, 3% a month 
and you're chasing that down, there's a lot of potential to lose money. And the first two weeks when a home comes on the market are always going to be the busiest. That's always going to be when there's the most interest. So you want to make sure you have the price set correctly up front. So what, let's 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 chat about that so we give somebody a better visual. Um, yeah. So, for example, in my neighborhood, houses are going for you know eight fifty. Um, mm-hmm. And if it's listed, at, if the house would uh, you know show on Zillow at eight fifty, and it, you know good house, all, all that kind of stuff, where would be a smart way? To, where would be uh, like a, a smart place to start? One of the things you look at is what are the others that are on the market and in escrow right now? Where are they priced at? Because most likely, the, so the eight fifty is going to be based on two three months ago of sales. Most likely the homes that are on the market in your neighborhood now are probably in the 820 or there's probably some at 799 or somewhere right there that are is where they're priced now and you need to be competitive or a little bit better than those. But it's looking at who's on the market as far as what homes, what are they priced at and which the homes that made it into escrow, what did they have to reduce their prices to in order to get into escrow? But um, you know, it, it, we're seeing anywhere from two to five percent difference from a lot of times what Zillow or some of those online systems say to what the homes are actually worth or somebody will pay for them in today's market. So it's important to know if you're looking at it on one of those online prices, you could be looking at something that's two or three months old in a declining market. Um, you know what? I could see where people could be over pricing their house and being stuck there and just not know. Yeah, exactly. And that's what makes it so tough when you have a rapidly changing market and most of the data that's available is already outdated. Yeah, no. And I was just thinking to myself when you said that, I said, that also means you need somebody who's been this, been through this before. Oh, a hundred percent. Because if you don't have the right person, you could be, you know, six, eight months, nine months down the road and give away half your house uh, because just because you have the wrong person. Exactly. We're getting a lot of calls. I'm getting a lot of calls from people that had gone with the family friend the other coworker, those you know, people that don't have the experience that haven't been in this for in the business for a long time, haven't been through this type of a market, you know, different situations like that, and they've just been sitting with no showings, no you know, no offers, nothing's happening on their properties, and then they're coming to me, getting you know, referred to me or finding me it's for different sources. But then we're having those you know difficult conversations of you know, your realtor's not doing this correctly with marketing. We can improve this with the shit staging, and then a lot of times it's pricing as well. One of my clients' wife's a, a realtor, um, and there's a number of them, so it's not one person I'm picking. I'm just saying this, uh, but um, it was it's, it was really interesting because she sells about a house or two a year, and they all come from friends. Yeah, and she had a house, uh, and, uh, and when there was this girl, it was just on the market, but it's just been on the market for a very long time. And the other couple actually went with somebody else because she just only sells a couple houses a year and she's done that for 10 years. So she got 10 years worth of experience, but she's only sold a couple houses. So right. there's not really a, a lot of experience because she hasn't sold that many houses. So yeah. as a result, they're, they're going with somebody who's actually like you who sold hundreds of homes. So it's, it's a, it, there's a big difference in experience gap there. So now what's the next thing? So the next part is the marketing. So once we get everything ready with the home, we've done our inspections, getting it priced and putting it onto the market. So many agents are passive. What we like call is passive is, you know, putting the sign in front, putting it on the MLS, and they're not really doing anything else to actively market the home, to actively find buyers. And especially in a market like we have right now, any market, it's important, but especially now we need aggressive marketing that's actively looking for buyers. So both the internet, print, mail, all of that type um consumer facing, but also calling around, calling through our database of people, calling around the neighborhood. So a lot of times people know somebody that might want to move into the neighborhood, but they're not actively watching um, to see what homes come on the market. So it's just doing anything we possibly can to get the home in front of more people, um, get more eyes on it because the more people see the home, then you know, the more potential to find that right buyer for the property. So we, and that's where we call the active marketing, where we're actively out searching for buyers for the properties. You know, it's really interesting for people to understand something when it comes to marketing. You, you're basically with you, if you're running a business, if you're trying to sell your house, it is all about the marketing. Cause mm-hmm. if you don't have marketing, nobody's going to come see it. Yeah. So if you're only doing one or two things and not 10 or 12, 
you have a very small window of people seeing and that funnel is going to take a lot longer to get through. So if you need to have a thousand people look at that house online or whatever to get 10 that might be interested to get down to three that would say, yes, I, w- I want to put in an offer. It's very hard to do that when you only have a very small lane of people coming in and take a look at it. So I can see how really very, very important in that that is. Yep. And that was a perfect way to explain it. And um, so right now where it's so difficult to find that right person, um, it's incredibly important. So, now, what's the last one? Uh, the negotiations. So the up, you, and this really, a lot of this comes down to experience where you need somebody with a lot of experience and not only, um, you know, selling homes, but been through the down market. And you need somebody that's going to actively and aggressively negotiate for you to get you know, the best terms possible. And then the second part of the negotiations is there's always two parts, two points of negotiation. There's that upfront offer and initial price and terms. And then the second point is after the buyers have done all of their inspections. And so we talk about the importance of doing the pre-inspections, doing everything up front, because we want to eliminate that second point of negotiations or reduce it as much as possible. And you gave the example of your neighbor that got hit with a $50,000 $50, request for a price reduction. And because they hadn't done everything to prepare and everything up front, they didn't have much of a leg to stand on because they needed to get the home sold. So we want to do everything to make sure we're in the best position best position for both points of negotiation and especially that second point of you know either eliminating or reducing anything that they can come back for and try and use as leverage that's wonderful hey glenn i want to thank you for coming on the show because right now it's it's a very interesting time when it comes to real estate and it's a time where it's going to get tougher and tougher for people and the information you share could make a whole big difference in the world and by the way if anybody wants to get a hold of you how do they go about doing that yeah, so you can reach me at 619-500-3222, or our website is uh, mypremierhomes.com. Could you say that one more time? Yeah, my, so M-Y, then premierhomes.com. Now, the, one of the reasons why we had Glenn on today is because this has become a big topic with our viewers. So you know what? Hey, if you want to go to the website at savingwithsteve.us, look for episode 109, you'll see a link to uh, Glenn's website as well as the phone number if you'd like to get more information. So Glenn, again, thank you so much for being here. I hope you have a wonderful 2023. And you know, again, I appreciate you sharing your wisdom with everybody. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. That's it with me. This is Steve Staxton with Saving with Steve. We'll look forward to seeing you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us on the Saving with Steve show hosted by Steve Sexton on UK Health Radio. To learn more about the show and how to become a guest or sponsor, visit savingwithsteve.us. That's savingwithsteve.us. Join us again next time as we continue to talk about everything under the sun that relates to you having a healthier, happier relationship with money. This has been the Saving with Steve show, hosted by Steve Sexton on UK Health Radio.